will quickly do a brief review of the last lecture. Then I would like to show you some more Dumbos. This time we'll look at a Dumbo called Turtle Dumbo. More specifically, K Turtle Dumbo. The Dumbo doesn't do conventional computations alone. It actually draws nice pictures. So we'll probably have a demo. You will have, in fact, some exercise in the lab to do when you go to the lab. Then we'll have a very brief introduction to the lab where you will see the real Dumbo. All these are abstractions. What you see are real computers inside the labs where you will map all these abstractions onto what you see there. In the last lecture, we typically prepared a simplified model of computing. We concluded that the computer is a dumb machine, but it can exchange and manipulate data. It can execute given instructions. And it can store a pre-written program that is a set of instructions and automatically execute all these instructions in the stipulated sequence. So given, say, 25 instructions in a sequence, Mr. Dumbo will execute all of those 25 exactly first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. Et so we concluded that there is one, some kind of a senior Dumbo and there are a lot of junior Dumbos. So this was our simplified model. Using this model, we actually met Dumbo called C++ Dumbo, who can store data values in memory locations, identified by given names. We also saw briefly that data can be numeric, string. There are other types which you shall see later. And Dumbo also has specific instructions for input and output. For the C++ Dumbo, we saw them as C in and C out. We believe that Mr. Dumbo can do arithmetic operations, can do logical comparisons, can do string manipulation, etc. And we had written two programs in C++. Actually, there were some deliberate errors in those programs because I had some quizzes following that. But the time ended, so I could not give you the quiz. So we'll have the quiz right now. We'll revisit the programs. Of course, this time the errors have been eliminated, but still there is a, there is a quiz which I have replaced in the second session, quiz, uh, second session slides also. So this is a set of instructions written for our C++ Dumbo. We specifically noted that we do not know what include IO stream and using namespace std semicolon means, but we just said we'll write it for the time being. We saw that this is a comment, so this is not meant for Dumbo but meant for human readers. We saw the keyword main. Main is the name of the program which we are trying to execute. Later on we shall see that there could be many such program modules. So this is actually a module called a function. We shall come to these nomenclatures later. Inside it, we saw that we have two names defined A and B as integer numbers. Then. Missing out of the first letter in that slide. I think I will try to be careful in future. But this program is easily understood by everybody. There's no confusion there. It's a very simple program. One specific thing that I would like to bring out is what is called the correct syntax. Syntax is the word that we use for writing proper grammar and spelling in any language. So there is also a syntax for computer languages. C++ syntax demands that C out, which is actually a function in the uh, uh, IO stream uh, class, C out and C in, these are called special functions. And in, in these classes, the less less and greater greater symbols actually are insertion operators. So each operator works on one particular element at a time. And that is the reason why you will see here that's why you will see here C out, there is a greater greater sign here, followed by one string, followed by another less less sign, followed by backslash n. We have a quiz on this. So I input two numbers, calculate the sum, and print the sum. So this is a string being uh, put out, then this is the name being put out, which means its value will be printed, and this is again followed by some funny character called backslash n. 
these programs are simple. This is another program which calculates Fahrenheit uh, temperature for a given centigrade degree value. Again, common sense. There is only one issue which we have not discussed, but we will discuss later in details when we study uh, the, the concepts of different types of data and the evaluation of expression that happens in C++. Every programming language has a peculiar way of calculating values. So for example, what should be the value that would be returned by 9 by 5 or C multiplied by 9 by 5? Okay, it's a moot point whether it will, this division will be a resulting in an integer value or a fractional value, etc., etc. We have a quiz on that. Here is the first quiz. Approximately how many different programming languages have been defined so far by computer scientists? You would have heard of some. Yesterday we spoke of uh, uh, Fortran, we spoke of uh, COBOL, spoke of uh, ALGOL. And then we said C, I also mentioned the other programming language called D, etc. So any guesses? Anybody for A? No, no, we'll, we'll, not, we'll not use voice words, we'll use hand words. So A, nobody. B, okay. Fairly large number of people believe that the programming language is between 6 to 20. Good guess. C, large number, 21 to 100. D, okay, equally divided. The actual answer is D, many more than 100. In fact, when I started studying programming language history in late 70s, there were about 520 known languages. And that is because unlike human languages, which have to evolve within a group of human beings. Unlike those, a computer programming language can be defined by one scientist and used only by him or her. There are a large number of languages which are used, which were defined by one scientist and used by that scientist and two of his or her PhD students. That's all. But the language exists, there is documentation and there is an implementation. That means that language can actually run on some computer. What's the point of this quiz? The point of this quiz is never ever in your life talk about I know C++, I know Java, I know C. That is the most nonsensical statement you can ever make. Because today you know some programming language, five years later a completely new programming language comes in and large number of people in the world are solving problems using that programming language. Do you mean to say you will have to study a one semester long course in that language? It's bunkum. There are a few programming paradigms. One paradigm is called procedural programming. The second paradigm is called object oriented paradigm. C++ incidentally belongs to the second class. And the third paradigm is called functional programming. These are the three different approaches of giving instructions to Mr. Dumbo. In each approach, there are programming languages. There are programming languages which follow one of these two approaches, but one of these three approaches, but also has fundamentals of computing from the other approach as well. What we need to understand is the principles of programming, concepts behind programming. The language is absolutely incident. So never even ever tell anybody that you know this programming language, you know that programming language. Anybody who makes that statement in IIT, most of us laugh at that. What it means, you know, if you say, I know three programming languages, that you mean to say that you know only three upon 600, assuming there are 600 programming languages, that means one upon 200, that means you know only 0.5% of the programming knowledge. And IITN knowing only 0.5% of the programming knowledge is a useless IITN. What you should say is I know programming concepts, I know programming principles and I have used those principles in this or that or that programming language to write programs. But given another programming language which follows the same paradigm, I can learn the syntax of that programming language in seven days and seven nights flat 
and I'll become an expert programmer in that program. If you cannot, then you have not learned programming. And that's the reason why we are consistently looking at Mr. Dumbo, not through the exact wording and syntax alone, but also what are the features and capabilities of that Dumbo. So please concentrate on the programming principles. The languages are incident. Of course, we have to use some language. Comparing it with the natural languages, I would say that when people say I know Hindi or Tamil or I know Gujarati or I know French, I ask this question, do you know how to think clearly? Because if you can't think clearly, then whatever you express will be lousy in whichever language. If you can think clearly, it is quite likely that in any language that you use, your expression will be very accurate. So the right thinking is what is the most important thing. Sorry for spending some time, but I saw a whole lot of people claiming I know this programming language, that program. Never compare or never bring the learning of a particular programming language into something else. Bring the principles of programming that you have learned there. And if you haven't, this is the time to learn them. So don't worry about number of programming here is that funny symbol backslash and we don't have time to take a vote on this so we'll just conclude when i say c out less less f less less backslash n the backslash n does not print as backslash n does not print as n it actually creates an end of line so that means the printer output or the terminal output goes on to the next line this is useful Otherwise, a whole lot of jumbling will occur on the output that Mr. Dumbo creates for you. You want that output to be easily discernible. And it is a good practice that for every set of values that you put, you always insert a backslash n. A backslash n stands for a new line character. So you go to the new line there. Nothing great. Here is quiz 3. This expression evaluates to 21 in C++. This is a computational logic. My colleague Dr. Sahana Murthy had either framed this question or found this question. It is an interesting question because it tries to understand the syntax and the associated semantics. Syntax is the way expressions are written and semantics is what that expression means. For example, 5 by 4 plus 20, 3 star 1 plus 6. Star you can guess to be multiplication symbol. Now, if you interpret this 3 star 1 plus 6 as 6 plus 1, 7 multiplied by 3, you get 21. But if you interpret as 3 into 1, you get 3, and then add 6, you don't get 20. The syntax in C says 3 in bracket 7. Any ordinary human being who has learned some maths will interpret this properly to mean 3 into 7. But Mr. Dumbo may not understand this. These are the squiggles. The real Google is D, none of these, or E, all of these. A, you are very sure it is A? Okay, what if 5 divided by 4 results in an integer value and the rest of the fraction is truncated, it will result in 1. 1 plus 20 is 21, correct. What if it results in a floating point value or a real value? No? Yes, the answer is we don't know at this stage. We have not studied how Mr. Dumbo evaluates expression. The only purpose of this quiz is to emphasize is that whenever we write expression, it is absolutely important for us to understand exactly how that expression will be evaluated by Dumbo, whichever be the programming language. Whatever are the rules in that programming language to evaluate expressions must be understood clearly by us. That's all. We'll now look at more on computing. So far we have seen that Dumbo can execute given instructions sequentially. But is that sufficient? Well, may not be. In fact, most probably it is not. Because not everything can be solved by writing instructions one after other. We took an example of a bicycle ride or a car ride. We said we'll go straight at certain speed in the car. But we also said that if there is a buffalo, we will stop or we will steer right. Note the question, if there is a buffalo. Normal instruction is keep going straight. But if there is something else that is happening which is not pursued originally, 
then don't go straight turn right now this kind of decision making capability has to be available with mr dumbo even for computational purposes so that is what we mean by saying that if we do not want dumbo to always execute instructions in the given sequence then dumbo needs some additional capability and these capabilities are in terms of the ability to make decisions and concurrent with that ability because decision will say what you ask a question to yourself yes or no is there a buffalo yes no buffalo no so if yes what do i do turn right if no i go straight what it means is i want to branch off to some other set of instructions in my program instead of carrying on with the sequential order so these two capabilities are absolutely essential for writing any meaningful programs we call them decision making capabilities we'll look at some of the decision making capabilities here typically we ask a question to mr dumbo involving a logical comparison obviously dumbo is unable to understand whether there is a buffalo on the road or not because dumbo deals only with values stored inside those memory locations but dumbo can definitely make comparisons for example if n is a drawer or a location it can certainly check if n is greater than 5 that is a question is n greater than 5 well the answer is either yes or no and this is the fundamental decision making capability that all dumbos have c++ dumbo fortran dumbo whatever whatever so they can look at a, this is called a logical expression comparison comparison always results in yes or no later on if you study some more things in uh, databases for example you will come across null values where the comparison does not necessarily result in a specific yes or no answer i'll comment on it through another quiz later but right now common sense tells us that if i ask a question of this type answer is either yes or no depends on what is the value of n there in that loop so if the answer is yes i want to execute one set of instructions otherwise i wish to execute another set of instructions this is very clear the way c++ dumbo is to be instructed to do either one of or the other is to write these kind of instructions of course i have not written a complete program but if you read this intuitively the purpose will be clear it says if n greater than 5 notice that there is a curly brass here and there is a closing curly brass here so the set of curly brasses encloses any number of instructions that you want to give all those instructions will be executed if the answer is yes else plain english like meaning else means if not if it is not so a is equal to 0 b is equal to 64 is this clear please note that dumbo's capability actually are extendable using exactly this kind of instruction making for example inside this opening brass and closing brass i have written only two instructions which assign values to a and b a is 23 b is 78 here if n is not greater than 5 then a is set to 0 and b is set to 64 but it's not necessary that this should have two instructions it can have 20 instructions it can have 2000 instructions and within these instructions there could be another if with its own opening brass and closing brass we, along with its else and within that if there could be another if this is called nesting of conditions it is important to understand the flow of activities when the program instructions are executed let us very quickly look at what we call a flow chart is this visible not very enthusiastic yes the last person can see this okay so this is a diamond shaped box suppose i have executed some instruction here some instruction here and i have come to the decision making stage at this point this is where dumbo ask himself a question is n greater than 5 if it says yes then it will execute two instructions which were the two instructions one would say a equal to 23 and the other would say b equal to 78 if the answer is no mr dumbo will say a equal to 0 and it will say b equal to 64 
what is important is after executing either these or these instruction mr dumbo will carry out with the subsequent set of instruction sequential so what is to be understood in this is that ordinarily dumbo will execute instructions in sequence but if you ask dumbo to make a decision based on yes or no answer it will either execute this set or execute this set this is pretty clear and simple this can be used to extend dumbo's capability to actually repetitively execute certain block of instruction why would you like to repeat instructions well we shall see the advantage of repeating some instruction for example uh, we ask dumbo to draw one square now instead of giving him instructions again to draw a square suppose i want to draw three squares i will say count 1 2 3 and for every time repeat drawing of the square so you draw a square draw a triangle whatever so any time there is a repetitive action i would like to create a repetitive instruction for mr dumbo although there are special syntax that is special provision on how to provide for this repetition the basic logic for that repetition comes out of the availability of decision making capacity and of doing something if the answer is yes something else if the answer is no let us first read this program is a program segment not a complete program let us see if we can guess what mr dumbo is doing here the dumbo is trying to check it actually starts with some number n which is some value i have defined three names here n count and a name called n factorial all of you can guess what n factorial should stand for factorial of n you all know how to calculate factorial of n 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into 6 etc etc up to n can you ever write a single expression if n is unknown if n is 5 i can write n factorial is equal to 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 5 If n is 23, I can write a long expression in one all. But if n is unknown at the time of writing program, I can't write a single expression. So I will have to create a repetitive process of multiplication to finally get my factorial of n. In this particular example, let us first analyze the program itself. That's the harder way. Then we will look at the corresponding flow chart. to understand how exactly the repetition is being set up here i take the input as n i set the n factorial as 1 initially i start with 1 what i do now is i have a very peculiar kind of instruction for my c++ dumbo which says for c count equal to 1 semicolon count less than equal to n semicolon count plus plus this for instruction says that just like in that if statement after this decision making block it is not a simple decision yes or no there is a block of instructions given what is that block of instruction n factorial is equal to n factorial multiplied by count n factorial equal to n factorial multiplied by count means whatever is the value in that n factorial multiplied by the current value of count if count is 1 it will multiply it by 1 count is 2 it will multiply by 2 n factorial will become 2 then if i count, set count to 3 it will multiply 2 by 3 the value will become 6 next time it will become 6 into 4 etc so every time this block is executed if i ensure that the value of count is different every time and it increases by 1 then i will eventually calculate factorial up to whatever values of count i am multiplying it with so what this particular code is trying to do is for count equal to 1 count less than equal to n count plus plus means start the block with count equal to 1 that's the starting condition keep on repeating the instructions in that set till count is or as long as count is less than or equal to n the moment count becomes greater than n get out and finally it says every time you execute the instruction after executing the instruction increase count by 1 count plus plus 
is nothing but a very funny way of telling C++ Dumbo to execute an instruction called count equal to count plus 1. Count equal to count plus 1 means whatever is the current value of count, add 1 to it and put the resultant value back in count itself. It is called incrementing the count. Please note count equal to count plus 1 is not an equation. There is an expression called count plus 1. Current value of count is taken, 1 is added to it. Whatever is the result of that expression is to be put back on the left hand side. Left hand side is count. This count equal to count plus 1 is abbreviated in C++ as count plus 1. At the end, you say factorial of n is n factor. The question is, is this logic correct? First of all, let us understand the logic. Please note down these three things in your notebook. For count equal to 1, count less than equal to 1, count plus plus. And note down this instruction, n factor equal to n factorial start count. We will actually execute it to see whether we get the correct n factorial or not. If not, we will make provision for it. Let us look at the flowchart through which Dumbo will execute this. So what Dumbo has done is it has just read in the value for n and it has set n factorial to 1. That is the initial action Dumbo has taken. Now the complicated instruction called for count equal to 1, count less than equal to n, count plus plus. We have to write the way in which Dumbo will work. The Dumbo will actually set count equal to 1 here. It will then check. If yes, what is it supposed to do? It is checking whether count is less than or equal to n. If count is indeed less than or equal to n, it will execute that instruction written inside that for opening brass, closing brass, which is multiplied by n factorial, sorry, multi, multiply n factorial, which I write only as nf, multiplied by count, and put the value back into nf. Please note, nf on this paper is same as n factorial. After this, after executing this instruction, it will add 1 to the count. Then, because it is a repetition, Dumbo will go back. Will it go here or will it go here? Now, if it goes here, the meaning of repetition will be lost because it will again reset count to 1. So it will go back here. This is the crux of iteration. Start with some value of count. Check if count has gone beyond a certain value. If it has not, that means it, means it meets that condition. Count is less than or equal to n. Keep doing this, but count is incremented here. You go back, do it, go back, do it. Somewhere or the other, count will become in greater than n. If count is no more less than or equal to n, the answer will be no. And you will come out here. And what will you do? You will basically output values. If I was to draw a single block around all the instructions which constitute this entire repetitive instruction for Mr. Dumbo. Clearly, the repetition part ends here. Where does the repetition part start? Does it start here or does it start here? The repetition part starts here, but the repetition instruction starts here. So as far as Dumbo is concerned, this whole thing is one block. 
this is the block which constitutes an instruction to Mr. Dumbo to repeat. Repeat whatever instructions are given, starting with count equal to 1 and continuing till count is less than equal to n, but every time increasing the count by 1. But execute those instructions in between. This is a very neat way of doing things. Suppose n was 5, then effectively I want this repetition to done how many times? 5 times. Let us execute this algorithm for n equal to 3 and let us see if we get correct value or not. Count is 1, n factorial is 1, first time I come here, 1 is less than 3, so I, I am starting here by saying n is 3. So let us execute these iterations, first time, this is called an iteration or repetition. First time what will happen? Count is 1, 1 is less than 3, I will come here, Count multiplied by nf, nf was 1, so the value of nf is 1 here. And count is 2. So this is nf and this is count. At the end of first iteration, you agree? I will go back here, count is 2 now. Is it less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. I will again come out here, multiply nf by count. Now count is 2, nf is 1, so the multiplication of nf will get me 2. So nf will now become 2. Come down here, count is equal to count plus 1, that means count now becomes 3. So count becomes 3. What I am drawing is second iteration or second execution. At the end, again I go back and check, is count less than or equal to 3? The answer is yes, count is 3, but it is still less than or equal to 3. So since the answer is yes, I will come out again here. Nf is equal to Nf multiplied by count. That means 3 multiplied by 2. So Nf will become 6. Come down here. Count will become count plus 1. It will become 4. Now I go back again and Dumbo checks. Is 4 less than or equal to 3? No, it is not. The answer is no. This time Dumbo will come out and it will print out the value of n factorial, which is 6. So we confirm that Dumbo will yield the correct answer. This kind of hand execution by drawing a flowchart is often a good idea initially to validate whether your iterative statements or repetitive statements to Mr. Dumbo will execute correctly or not. Some special cases here. What if value of n is 0? You start with n equal to 0 here, come out here, count is 1. Is count less than or equal to 0? No. So the answer will be no first time itself. You will come out. What will you print? 1. Factorial 0 is 1. Good, correct answer. What if I give a value minus 23? n is minus 23. I come out here, minus 23. n factorial is 1, count is equal to 1. Is c count less than or equal to n? c count is 1, n is minus 23. 1 is not less than or equal to minus 23. Answer, no. Mr. Dumbo comes out here. Next says, print nf. n factorial is factorial minus 23 is equal to 1. Is that correct? What is factorial minus 23? not defined. Mr. Dumbo doesn't care one hoot for your mathematical definitions. What should we do to our program then? How should I modify the program? The simplest way is that once I read the value of n, I do a conditional test. Is n positive or zero at least? So the, what will be the conditional execution? If n greater than or equal to 0, then do all of that, including repetition. Else, nothing. Print, shout, shout, shout. So from Mr. Dumbo, the answer you should get it. Please do not ask me to calculate factorial of stupid negative values. That is the string that should be printed. But if you don't instruct Dumbo to do that, Dumbo will still print one. This tells you to be how 
Careful, you ought to be. You can solve using these if statements or conditional executions, things like finding roots of quadratic equation. There will be enough text examples and programming examples. Typically, you are given values of three coefficients a, b, and c for a quadratic ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. You would have solved the roots of this equation umpteen times in your life, right? You calculate a discriminant which is b square minus 4ac under root and then you calculate root 1 as minus, uh, sorry, discriminant upon 2a or something and then or minus 2a, whatever, 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 that formula. Everything works well ordinarily except when b square minus 4ac turns out to be negative and you ask Mr. Dumbo to calculate square root of negative. This time, since there is no specific instruction, here you are instructing in respect to the value print and factorial as 1, even if it is negative. But there, you are asking him to calculate square root. And then, it goes into some kind of a chakkar, saying, how do I calculate square root of minus 23? It can't. So, it will give an error message. What Dumbo will say is, I am sorry, but you have given me an instruction which I cannot execute. You as programmers must avoid such a situation to come about at all, whatever be the values people give to your program as input. That's your responsibility as programmers. So this is the basic decision making. We will we'll stop the decision making at this stage. Okay. We meet another Dumbo. I had actually a demo here. I don't know whether I, I will be able to show it. Let me just try that very quickly. I should have switched this on. This Dumbo is called Turtle Dumbo. Many, many years ago, a programming language was created called Turtle Script. You would have heard of Logo. Logo actually is a programming environment meant for school children to understand programs. As a matter of fact, the concepts that we have studied, barring some peculiar squiggles, are very straightforward. Particularly, the logic with which Dumbo executes instructions can be understood by anybody. Young children may not understand for i equal to count equal to 1, count less than equal to n, etc., etc., but they can understand repeat something 5 times, repeat something 10 times, repeat something 4 times. We now know how repeat something n times can be implemented using complicated decision making that our C++ Dumbo is capable of. But the turtle Dumbo, which can actually execute instructions of this type, has also simplified instructions, which says simply repeat five times, repeat n times, repeat four times, etc., etc. Let me see if I can get the... So this turtle can draw nice pictures, which we shall very briefly see. Turtle script is a programming language. There is a handbook of turtle script. It defines all the instructions that turtle can execute which I have given as, all, all these slides will be on the website anyway, so you can note down this. And there is some part of your lab using TurtleScript. But before I switch over to the demo, let us very quickly meet another Dumbo, the real one this time. The real Dumbo is in your lab. You will meet him during your lab slot. Follow the instructions given on the course homepage. More specifically, lab starts from Thursday, 30th July 2009. There are exquisite instructions for the lab. Since the class is very large, unless everybody abides by the discipline of the breakup of groups and attendance in those groups and batches and so on, it will be impossible to handle the lab situation. The first lab is an introductory lab. There is an assignment for the lab but there won't be any marks deducted if you are not able to complete and submit that assignment properly. The first lab is actually for you to acquaint yourself with the computing environment. Since you are meeting real Dumbo this time, artificial abstract ideas will not work. You'll have to type in your name as a roll number as login. You'll have to type in your password. I hope all of you are familiar with this. There were a few hands raised in the first lecture when I asked anybody who has not seen a computer. I believe there are about 8 to 10 such students. They need not worry. There will be teaching assistants who will help you to sort out these issues. But you must, of course, understand what a keyboard is and what different keys are for. You would have probably seen a typewriter. If not, I would suggest that those students who have never seen a computer 
might want to look at a computer in their hostel somewhere before coming to the lab. But even if they can't, the lab will take care of that. The lab sessions will be held in the old software lab. This is located in the mathematics department building. All of you are familiar with maths department building next to library. So don't go to the maths department. Walk into the corridor of the ground floor. You'll go past a office called CD for Center for Distance Engineering Education Program. The center which incidentally is doing live webcast of these lectures and is also preparing this post-production edited material for later release. So you go past that, the double glass door, you enter and presto, you are in old software lab. It is called OSL because now there is a new software lab. But that did not concern me. Most important, your lab group numbers, I, as I told you, is the last digit of your roll number with some exceptions. There are three exceptions. If your last two digits are 41, you will belong not to batch 1 but to batch 0. If your last two digits are 42, you will belong not to batch 2 but batch 8. And if your last two digits are 51, then you will not belong to batch 1 or batch 0, you will belong to batch 9. All people with these roll numbers ending in 41, 42 and 51 need to specifically remember their lab slots which are different from the logically assigned ones. Each batch is further divided into four sub-batches which we call groups. Typically in every sub-batch which we call A, B, C, D for convenience, there are about 20 to 22, somewhere between 18 to 22 students. These 18 to 22 students will form a homogeneous group and they will have a single assigned uh, teaching assistant to look after them. That teaching assistant is effectively your teacher for the lab course. So please get to know him well. He or she will solve all your problems. In case there are issues, there will be a senior TA present in the lab. And of course, I will make occasional forays into the lab as well. First week, I propose to attend all the labs for some time. So these are the 40 subgroups consisting of around 20 to 23 students. The batch timings are 6.35 to 8.35 and 8.40 to 10.40 in the evening and night. Now that's the sore point. There's nothing we can do about it. Fortunately, the leopards have stopped coming to the campus for some reason. So you need not worry about being eaten by a leopard. Even otherwise, when the leopards used to come, they never touched a human being. They are rumored to have, uh, you know, hurt some stray dog or something. So you don't have to worry. Campus is a safe place. But that is how, unfortunately, the lab timings are set. Please ensure that you do not have any other activity during your lab slots. All this is stated on the home page, so you can check. Okay. Now, there is a turtle program on the left, which you cannot see. Unfortunately, on this stupid laptop, there is no way to automatically increase the font size. What I will do is, I will put these sample turtle strip programs into the lab assignment handout when you go there. But effectively, if you execute this, it asks you a question, how many squares do you want to draw? Suppose I say one, it draws one square. The execution is very simple. All of this is automated. You go to this ring-like thing and press your mouse. It will execute it. Now suppose I say draw five squares. Basically, there is a repeat instruction which will repeat five times or n times that I say n. It will draw one. It will draw second. It will draw third, of course. And, and by the way, on the left-hand side, you will see a flickering, uh, this thing, which actually shows which instruction is being executed. You can actually feel what Dumbo is doing, the turtle Dumbo is doing. If you, if you execute this again for, let's say, larger number, let's say 10, notice every time it, it is repeating, there are two repeats. There is an internal repeat to draw a square, and outside is there is a repeat to draw so many squares. But every time a square is drawn, the pen or the turtle moves away without drawing anything to some next position at some angle. And that angle itself depends upon how many, circle, how many squares you have asked it to draw. It's an extremely simple programming paradigm, particularly if you understand input, 
it can take one value as input. You understand repeat, which is something really similar to for count equal to zero something something. And then instead of saying calculate this, calculate that, it has instructions like pen down, forward so many uh, points, backward so many points, angle so much, etc. Et Extremely simple instructions. I think you will enjoy doing that because here you can actually see where your algorithm is working properly or not. So with this, we will conclude today's lecture.